Good evening. They said Rahul Morgan here as a group chief executive officer, Treshi Consulting. As we speak, Treshi Consulting is a multinational headquartered group based out Singapore. We are a multinational and multi-asset hedge fund, which precisely means we are taking positions at multiple locations across the globe, which includes United States, Europe and Asia. By multi-asset, I mean we take positions in multiple assets, which includes, you know, uh, your gold, silver, equities and multiple asset classes. Having said that, which I repeated many a times. We are a proprietary hedge fund. By proprietary hedge fund, I mean we do not invite third party capital, which precisely means whatever positions which we are taking is backed up by our own capital. Please take a note of that. Trishi Consulting is a growing company. We keep adding multiple domains in our company. To us, feedback, like, dislikes, comment, views, subscribers, these things hardly material. Today, on 4th August 2022, we are starting our journey in international transfer pricing arrangements, which by the way, is one of the most complicated and one of the most tough and interpretation issue topic in the world. This pertains to the direct and in some cases pertains to the indirect tax as well. And in the transfer pricing, I as like a foreign exchange would be highlighting those issues where and by which people are reluctant to speak. So guys, first of all, we need to understand that Indian IT industry is divided into two parts. You know, we need to learn that. I spent around nine to nine and a half years in Indian IT industry which includes near about two and a half years in SCL Technologies, Shivnader's group and around seven years in EXL, which is an Indian counterpart of a US NASDAQ listed firm. As a corporate treasurer, I dealt with transfer pricing very closely because our hedge program, basically the currency hedging is completely based on the TP arrangements, especially in EXL and the EXL subsidiaries. Indian IT industry is divided into two parts. Number one, we based out India and we are serving Indian and foreign clients with direct billing approach. Example, we have four Indian IT companies, HCL, Wipro, TCS, Infosys, SCL, Wipro, TCS, Infosys. That doesn't mean we do not have other IT companies. We have many other IT companies also, which we have Emphasis, Persistence, Coffrench, Larson and Tubro and multiple other IT companies also in India. But practically speaking, this section of IT company is directly billing to the client. So this companies do work. So example, we have an IT company in India who is getting work from Microsoft US. So Microsoft US wants to uh, make some software product and they want a coding help example. So this IT companies will help them for the coding and the person would either be based out India or or outside. Indian IT industry work on three models. Number one, the onshore model, which means 
a person sits in India, it could be New Delhi, it could be Gurgaon, it could be Bangalore, could be Chennai, could be Calcutta, could be any place in India. He or she would be in India and handling an international client could be Microsoft, maybe Apple, maybe Amazon, maybe Facebook, maybe big names, right? Doing variety of jobs. The place where this work is done is known as GDC. GDC stands Global Development Center. It's a fancy name. Indian IT companies are very well known to have fancy names. So please don't be worried about that. This is the beauty of Indian IT companies. Cumulatively speaking, the four top IT companies of India, which includes HCL plus TCS plus Wipro plus Infosys, together they're not earning 50 billion in one year together and how much Apple making one year you yourself check if I include Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft and Google then Indian IT company stands nowhere but the beauty our media do not speak that way anyways. The second set of IT companies is those who work on the transfer pricing arrangement. So, my ex-company EXL, Cognizant and many other such companies. What they do, their US counterpart, probably the European counterparts, they get the business. So EXL US get the business. EXL US would be billing to Microsoft. But EXL US would be doing that business in India because India is technically less cheap than US because of the dollar INR difference. But you know that this INR dollar INR difference is waiting now. So very soon the competitive advantage, I repeat, the competitive advantage tag of Indian IT industry would go away. And this is happening because I remember in 2007 and 2008, when I used to work in HCL, Indian IT industry used to earn 40%, 50%, 60% of net profit. 40%, 50, 60% of net profit. And today, the same Indian IT industry is making 10%, 15% of net profit. Which means from 2008 till 2022, from 60% to 15%. Probably in another five years, we would be 15% to 5% because attrition is rising. Skill set is definitely an issue. India is a country where people chase degrees, be it MBA, be it finance, be it any field except few. But industry wants technical knowledge. You know, technical knowledge. I have seen that even uh, banks recruit from top business schools and put their candidates on bench for two months, three months to give them the practical exposure. Even recruitment from a top business school, you are supposed to have a training program because they're being taught theoretically. Now, Indian IT industry revenue is slowly, slowly falling pressure on the margin, margin is between 10 to 15%. But coming to the point, EXL India and other such IT ES companies, information technology enabled companies, do the work for their principal in US, probably their other subsidiaries in Europe. In this eventuality, they are subject to the transfer pricing, which means the arm length transaction. So. If there is a hundred dollar work which is done by EXL or any such company for their foreign subsidiary, then they have their markup. That markup could be 10%, could be 15%, could be 17% and these markups keep changing. US or the Europe, the main entity who is billing to the client, their markup is very extensive. In short, the transfer pricing arrangement is nothing 
but an arrangement which is signed by the Indian counterpart with their foreign counterpart. That foreign counterpart should be the associated company under Section 92 of the Indian Income Tax Act 1961. There is a proper but ambiguous definition of associated company. Now Treasury Consulting entered into the transfer pricing. We would be having a lot of videos on our YouTube and challenging the existing status quo. Now there is a problem in, in the system. The problem is that if the cost advantage of India to wane, which is waning, the reason being the profit margin of Indian IT industry, which used to be 60%, now it is 15%. If this profit margin would wane further, then the transfer pricing arrangement between Indian ITES industry and their foreign counterpart, they would also dilute, which would impact the tax base of India, especially the direct tax of India. Henceforth, we need to understand that India either need to reduce its corporate tax. So let's me let me give you a simplistic example. If you are in Dubai, if you have a company in Dubai and suppose it's a non oil, non trading company. So there are three categories of companies. One is the non oil company, oil company, non trading company and trading company. Suppose you are in Dubai and suppose it's a non oil and non trading company till 3,75,000 AED of net profit, you will pay zero tax. And after 3,75,000 of AED, you pay 9% tax. And suppose you have some separate arrangement with the Dubai government, you are bringing a huge, huge money into the system, creating a lot of jobs for the local, bringing lot of reforms into the system, they will give you the preferential tax rate. Dubai and Singapore is known for that. Like Singapore corporate tax is 17% after exemptions. But if you bringing special thing for Singapore, they will give you exemptions. Now in this eventuality, there is a huge, there is a huge possibility that IT companies will route their transaction from near shore and that near shore might be Dubai. After Dubai, the next near shore is the Hungary, which is charging 9% tax. And next is the Ireland, which is charging 12% tax. Rest all European economies are charging 20, 20%, 23% and these kind of corporate taxes, excluding CES and all these things. So we need to understand that in upcoming time, India would be facing substantial changes in the transfer pricing arrangements, especially in the IT industry, because IT industry profitability is waning. So if you are working in IT industry, especially the industry which is working on a transfer pricing, also known as the arm length transaction, in this eventuality, get ready for that. This is Rahul Magan. You know my number, 9899242978.